And we, as you can see from behind me, we are coming on with some breaking news right now. And we just want to give you some footage of this morning outside is really Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's home. That's because we have a big development here. The Israeli military said Hezbollah has fired dozens of rockets and several drones into northern Israel this morning, killing one person. But one of those drones was directed at Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's holiday home. There were no casualties. Of course, as we've been telling you here on Live Now from Fox all week, this comes as Iran Iran's supreme leader vowed that Hamas would continue its fight against Israel following the killing of the mastermind of last year's deadly October 7th attack Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar. Neither Netanyahu or his wife were home, and there were no casualties, as I just said. Meanwhile, though, in Gaza, more than 50 people have been killed in several Israeli strikes, including children, in less than 24 hours. To talk about this a little bit more is Jonathan Aruhi. He's director of foreign policy at Ginza. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. And let's just get right into it here. Uh, Hezbollah said that they were going to launch a new phase of this war after the death of Sinwar. So is this a drone strike uh, on Netanyahu's home the first signs of that? I think it's certainly a sign of, of their intent, if not their capacity. Uh, to fire a drone at Netanyahu's house, which is deep inside Israel from the Lebanon border, uh, both signals that Hezbollah still has reach after all the devastating losses that Israel has inflicted on them in the last month. And also the use of a drone, I think, is particularly telling because those are what have had the most success from Hezbollah's perspective in terms of evading Israel's air defenses. Just last week, it was a drone attack that killed four IDF soldiers. And more broadly, I think Hezbollah's fire has been up uh, since the past couple of weeks to unprecedented levels against Israel. That shows no signs of slowing down. So I, I think certainly Hezbollah keeps trying to regroup after all the uh, losses and chaos Israel has inflicted upon it. And they show no signs of abating their fire or agreeing to a ceasefire. And Iran's supreme leader did say, I do want to pop up this video here of Sinwar as we talk about this, because this was the big news of the week. Iran's supreme leader said Hamas is alive and well and will stay alive after the death of Sinwar. But what does the future of Hamas look like in terms of leadership and have they been too weakened by his death? So his loss uh, certainly is monumental for the group. It was very indicative that after uh, Ismail Haniya, Hamas's political leader, was killed in Tehran a couple months ago, that uh, Sinwar then took over the political as well as the military portfolio, essentially running most of the most of the group. So his loss it certainly is a is a symbolic victory for Israel, although although incomplete. Uh, I think at this point it's uh, quite possible that no single person. Uh, takes over both because of the sort of commanding role that Sinwar had uh, in Hamas, but also as a reflection of the fact that Hamas, while still far from defeated, has been broken up and pulverized and is now, you know, several different groups operating across Gaza rather than one uh, coherent and unified command. Now, a pretty loaded question, but for our viewers who have not been following this closely, perhaps, could you just delve into the connection between the Houthis, Hamas, Hezbollah, and Israel? Certainly. Uh, they're all part of what Iran labels its axis of resistance. It's a network of proxies around the Middle East that seek to surround not only Israel, but our presence, America's presence in the region, with a ring of fire, essentially rockets, drones, missiles, and other capabilities uh, that enables Iran to push the costs and risks of attacking Israel and the United States away from itself and onto these uh, non-Iranian forces. And we, what we've seen since October 7th is the increasing uh, coordination among these various groups. Uh, previously, they operated sort of on their own, all in the service of Iran with Iranian weapons and funding and training. Uh, but it's only been re in recent months that we've seen them act as the united front, or at least try to. Um, so obviously, while there's differences in terms of uh, sectarian, national, and 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 other uh, identities for these groups, they have become increasingly unified around their uh, willingness, even despite losses they've taken, to keep pressuring Israel and the United States around the region with military attacks. 
And of course, we've seen these continuous calls from hostage families to release the remaining hostages. After the news of Sinwar's death broke, we also did see more of those families calling on the Israeli government to negotiate a deal to get all the hostages back. But at this stage, given this attack now on Netanyahu's home, is that really in the realm of possibility? So I would say it's never really been in the realm of possibility. Um, Sinwar certainly was a primary obstacle to agreeing to a ceasefire. Uh, he could never take yes for an answer for months, uh, despite the U.S. and Israel sending him propositions that reportedly his group had agreed upon. Um, you know, I think in terms of the hostages, there's a very difficult reality here, which is Sinwar was never going to give them up. And now, uh, in his absence, we've seen Israel try a new approach, which is to say to Hamas remnants in Gaza, if you're holding hostages, give them up, surrender, and you get a free pass out of Gaza, And in the hope that that's the best remaining option to try to find these hostages. Because I think otherwise, what's going to happen is what happened earlier this summer, which is as the IDF closes in on the remaining hostages, they will unfortunately be executed by Hamas. And we touched on this on the first question, but this idea of going forward, uh, this concern that this war is going to become even more widespread than it already is, uh, may be more prevalent than ever now with this. Going forward, do you think that it is at all possible that there could be an end to this war? Or do you think that this sign of what we're seeing today just is showing that there will be an escalation? I think uh, it's correct to call it the war. Um, it's not just a war in Gaza, a separate war in Lebanon and Yemen, et cetera, et cetera. Increasingly, uh, the way to end the war in Gaza and Lebanon and uh, to cap the escalation between Israel and Iran in a way that's favorable to Israel and the United States is for the United States and Israel to remain on the same page diplomatically and militarily with, with U.S. support for Israel like we've been seeing with this deployment of air defenses. But even more than that, is needed. Hezbollah uh, still seems content to hold out until there's a Gaza ceasefire. That's still the pressure point they're trying to apply, even despite the losses that they have taken. And Sinwar certainly based his hope for victory on Hezbollah and Iran launching a multi-front war that ties down Israel and, and convinces Israel to come to a ceasefire. And now I think even with Sinwar's death, uh, that basic dynamic remains in play. And so I think, you know, the United States and Israel, there's there's plenty more fighting that's going to happen in Gaza. The, the Israelis and the Americans have been quite frank about that, especially in the absence of a ceasefire or even with one, there's, that potential remains. But I think now the United States and Israel are really focusing correctly, I believe, on trying to get Hezbollah to throw in the towel and putting pressure on Iran to use its good graces and its leverage with its proxies to say enough is enough, this war has to stop. That's, I think, the route where you get a cessation of this conflict. Jonathan, we appreciate you as always for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to add about this breaking news before I let you go? I would just say, um, you know, Hezbollah remains uh, defiant. Again, they have been launching more attacks in the last two weeks than they have in the previous year since they joined uh, Hamas's war unprovoked. Uh, I would say it's been very impressive what Israel's done in the last month or so. I think a lot of us uh, looking in from the outside didn't fully expect that they would be that effective or that Hezbollah would not be able to retaliate with the full force of all the might that it's assembled in the last 18 years. Yet I would caution that Hezbollah still has a lot of impressive capabilities. And in a lot of ways, the IDF, as impressive as they have been operationally, are operating on a shoestring, running out of interceptors, air-to-air -air missiles, even basic things like bullets and ammunition. And I think this is a key area where the United States needs to keep supporting Israel, both for the diplomatic signal it sends, but also for supporting Israel's ability to try to force Iran and Hezbollah to throw in the towel. Yeah, and there's a lot to watch here going forward to see what develops. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Of course.